what if I tell you that you are reading this thick book, but for the last 50 years, we all are reading just the first page. We have not moved forward from the first page. Well, it will feel like frustration, right? That's exactly what is happening with biotechnology. Biotechnology field, the life science field is so vast that the progress seems like not moving forward. But in reality, well, there has been a lot of progress which has happened. And any kind of progress in biotech is directly proportional to the progress in health tech in directly proportional to the drugs which we will be using in the future. And of course, a better human lifestyle. So if biotech has to grow, then the human race will have to come together. And today in this video, we're going to talk about 10 unsolved mysteries or rather say unsolved challenges which humanity faces, which actually is because biotech has not been able to solve it yet. Now, by saying that we have not been able to solve it yet doesn't mean that we will not be able to solve it. And if you're watching this video till the end, I am sure you're going to get a lot of ideas on 10 different directions, 10 different career directions in which you can go and pursue your career in biotech. And at the same time, you will know what are the challenges researchers are facing and how can you address them. So let's get started. So first things first, as a biotechnologist or a life scientist, you should know that humanity faces existential crisis and that is when they remember biotech scientists. So it's all right when people say that, hey, uh, this field has not got any uh, importance because they will remember its importance when things go wrong. Just like the COVID pandemic, just like when we will see cancer and new neurodegenerative disorders or people dying because of multiple reasons. So that is where people realize that, hey, we need biotech, right? But let's keep that um, debate aside. The number one challenge which we face as biotechnologists today is the unsolved mystery of cancer. Like I said in the beginning, it seems like we are still reading the first page of the cancer book. But the challenge is, despite decades of intensive research, despite significant breakthroughs which we have achieved and, and a lot of money which has been spent into this, we still are yet to find one complete universal cure to any kind of thing. We have not found it yet. Now, this seems frustrating, but at the same time, cancer is an incredibly complex disease with hundreds of different types and subtypes, each of, it, each of its own unique uh, genetic profile and resistance mechanism. It is really, really difficult to find a cure to cancer. And that is where you can pursue your research and a lot of dollars are being spent by developed countries because majority of developed countries uh, citizens are getting this. Now, apart from that, developing countries, as the lifestyle improves, we are seeing increase in cancer. Right? Now, the ongoing eff efforts which is there is definitely in the right direction, but it requires more brain power. And that is where you will come into picture. So researchers are exploring innovative therapies, innovative approaches, such as targeted uh, therapies, immunotherapies, and combination treatments to overcome the resilience of cancer cells. Understanding the genetic drivers and signaling pathways that fuel the tumor growth is a crucial step in the development and creation of more effective therapies for the future. Now, at the same time, cancer is also adapting to newer ways of malignancy. So the future outlook is going to be all about how many researchers are going to get in, how much dollars are being spent in this direction, and what kind of catalyst we have in this, just like artificial intelligence or machine learning comes into picture. Okay, maybe that will help. So with continued advancements in genomics, data analytics and precision medicine, the prospects of universal cancer cure remains a tantalizing possibility. We are yet to see where, whether this disease will find a cure. But at this juncture, at the time of making this video, yes, we still are at a mystery phase. We are still reading the first page of the book called as cancer. The second challenge, which is an unresolved mystery or an unresolved, unresolved challenge for biotech scientists is Alzheimer's disease. Now, the Alzheimer's disease has got multiple uh, challenges. It's a neurodegenerative disease, as we know. So we have tau protein tangles. Now, one of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease is the accumulation of tau protein tangles, which disrupts the normal brain function and contributes to neurodegeneration. 
Now, understanding the precise mechanisms behind tau protein aggregation and its role in the disease pro progression is crucial, but so far we have not under understood it well. Followed by that, we will ha also have to look at the beta amyloid plaques. Now, another key feature of Alzheimer buildup is beta amyloid proteins, which forms plaques that can interfere with synaptic function and trigger the neuroinflammation. Now, this neuroinflammation further escalates a big chain reaction, but deciphering the relationship between tau uh, tangles and beta amyloid plaques and the overall progression of the disease is very, very complex. And at this juncture, we don't have any answers to that yet. We are yet to understand that. And then we have to understand the underlying causes. What causes it? What initiate, you know, triggers this particular reaction and deposition of beta amyloid proteins? So researchers are delving into the underlying genetic and uh, environmental factors that contribute to the development of Alzheimer's disease. Now, you have to identify the root cause and, of course, find out the biomarkers that will probably let us know, okay, there is a development of this disease already in a patient. So, yes, this is one of the challenges which humanity faces today. The next one is obviously CRISPR-Cas9 and gene editing ethics versus safety. Let's say that I edited the gene and the next baby which was born had blue eyes, which hypnotizes, right? Of course, yes. But there is a problem with this. The problem is, what will be the long-term effect? What if the genes are a house of cards and we went to edit one of them, one particular chromosome or a gene, and then that leads to expression of further newer types of genetic disorders? So that's where the safety concern is, that if we are wrong, then we will not realize until it has already happened. The second problem is the ethics side. We, on one hand, we are talking about unintended consequences. Then there can be the risk if it goes into the wrong hands. The third will be who is going to decide which gene can be edited and which cannot be, whether it is going to be government or whether it is going to be the entrepreneurs or whether it is going to be the people. Who will decide which genes should be edited? And how do you regulate it? Right. So ethics of gene editing is always going to hound us. And this is currently a unresolved challenge, not a mystery, but unresolved challenge, which we will see getting resolved in the future. Now, followed by that, one big problem which women face is pregnancy. Now, pregnancy as such is not a problem. It's a blessing because that's how we, are, we all are born. But what if we could take the pregnancy out of the body into artificial wombs? What if the woman doesn't need to go through that nine months of hardship to give birth to a baby? What if it could be done just like how we manufacture? Now, there, are, there is ethical concerns of that. We will come to that. But what if this is possible? But so far, research is happening. We have not found any such success yet, whether in animals or within humans. Now, neonatal care implications will be there. There will be questions about reproductive rights dilemma. What if people start you know, creating a chain reaction? Then there will be technical challenges. What if while the baby is inside the womb and there is any technical issue and the baby dies? So that is going to be. And the huge societal impact because now when people are going to have babies without any hardship, they may offer five or ten babies. Now that can lead to a population explosion. So on one hand, this is a good idea. On the other hand, it can have severe implications on human race. So it's going to be an unresolved challenge, unresolved mystery. How would we do it? But definitely you can look into this and probably create something worthwhile in this direction also. So let me know in the comment section which particular research direction you want to go and resolve one of the mysteries of the biotech world in the section below. Now coming to the next section which we have right now is antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance or AMR, antimicrobial resistance as we say it, is all because of reckless use of antibiotics. There is overuse, there is misuse, there is non-prescription delivery of antibiotics to people, right? And people think that if they have a small cough and cold, they can just pop in a pill and it'll work. But you are training the bacteria how to, you know, adapt to this new type of antibiotic. And you should know that there are only limited number of antibiotics in the world. So what if the number of antibiotics remains the same, but the bacteria gets strained and now a small infection, the bacteria won't be, we won't be able to kill the bacteria using antibiotics. And this will lead to a pandemic. In fact, we are sitting on this pandemic as we speak. So we will have to understand that bacteria can also undergo a evolutionary adaptation. 
and that means they are being constantly trained by all of us when we are overusing or misusing antibiotics so there is a urgent need for innovation of new type of antibiotics at the same time reduction in the reckless use of antibiotics so this is one uh, challenge which biotechnologists will face and hopefully you or someone from your fraternity is going to solve this problem the next one which we are facing today is the regenerative medicine yes in all my videos i have talked about the promise it has but let me tell you today that the progress is not promising yet if we look at it 30 years ago there was a big revolution in india where we saw stem cell banking but where are those stem cells going they are being stored but till now we have not seen tangible results now why because there is no much investment going in because biotech as such requires a lot of investment and passionate entrepreneurs both are missing as we speak if we have passionate entrepreneurs and funding coming in nobody can stop regenerative medicine to grow but at this juncture we are unable to harness it to its complete potential full potential still the organ regeneration part is not done completely the wound healing we are still in the explorative phase we have not achieved that and when it comes to biomedical innovation we are still far away so this requires this particular exciting field requires a lot of you to jump in and find solutions to this challenge so that we could heal better faster efficient in a more functional way and we could create organs out of the body which could do functions which cannot be done within the body so i think this is a great field to go for the next and the last challenge right now humanity faces and it is being partially solved by elon musk neuralink is the brain computer interface you must have seen those tweets and those a uh, videos where you uh, would have seen a paralyzed person a person in coma playing is able to play chess or is able to tweet imagine when brain and computers comes together it's a powerful combination but at this juncture there is only one company which is working on this so when i see only one company working in this direction then probably there is a lot of potential to do much much more there is more dollars to be earned in this direction if you jump in so the potential application will be restoring the mobility of those with spinal cord injuries neurological disorders enhancing the cognitive uh, abilities of humans and sensory perception controlling external devices and prosthetics and the power of thought and we will be able to give eyes ears and you know to the blind i think uh, and uh, deaf people it's huge the technical challenges are there hardware challenges as well as software challenges the interface itself is going to be a big challenge there will be a lot of ethical concerns but if we are able to achieve this seamless brain and electronic systems sync we will be able to overcome the complexity we face because of some accident many people lose their limbs they are not able to move but they will be a part of the workforce currently we need to overcome this complexity of the brain's neural network we need to understand the signaling pathways we need to make sure that uh there is safety and there is no short circuit like how it happens in electrical systems and of course there is a long term stability of the interface so that it does not just vanish and now the person is just like okay the internet is not working the server is down it should not happen to such a person right because it's uh, very bad but there will be ethical con considerations i know that there will be questions about how do we preserve the privacy of this person the autonomy of the brain reading uh, technology addressing the potential for misuse such as people start using it for military uh, and criminal applications or what if there is a lot of um, misuse by criminals in uh, hacking attempts and all that so the more we blur this man machine interface this divide in between man and machine we are looking at a potential problem so even that is going to be a challenge so i shared i think seven or eight uh, different fields with you today Let me know in the comment section which one seems challenging to you, which one you want to jump in and do research on. If you personally ask me, I would love to solve three problems in this. Okay, the last one which I said, brain computing interface, that's my favorite. The second will be regenerative medicine because that makes a lot of people they will be able to move. You know, organs will be able to replace, and the third is cancer. and fourth will be amr so according to me these are the four one which if i was a researcher or if i was in a lab i would love to work on any of these fields which field you will be interested to work on let me know in the comment section 
And if you have any questions or any feedback, you can always write to me at shekhar at biotechnica.org. So with this, we come to the end of this video. Keep shining. Take care. Bye-bye.